Hello, I'm Victoria Hansen from Black Book Cooking. Thanks for joining us for this week's blog. Today we're talking bechamel sauce. Now, bechamel sauce sounds quite fancy. It is French, and that is a French name. But essentially, it is just a basic white sauce or a melted butter sauce. In fact, it was the very first sauce I ever learnt when I was in high school. And uh, I always wanted to be a cooking teacher. And, uh, and when I learnt this sauce, I thought, wow, there's so many things I could do with it. Even back then, at the age of 12, I saw the versatility of this sauce, and it really is an incredibly versatile sauce. But I am completely blown away by the amount of people who don't make it well. And I think the reason is, I think the recipes are wrong. Now, I make it completely differently than most people. And in fact, a lot of the recipes on Black Book Cooking are not made the traditional way. And I often get reprimanded by a lot of chefs whom I know who say, you know, that's not the way to make it, Victoria. But here's the thing. I don't think that there are any right or wrong ways when it comes to cooking. I think it's about finding a formula that works for you and when it comes to bechamel sauce, I found a formula a long time ago that absolutely guaranteed I would not have any lumps whatsoever in that sauce. And so I'm going to share that with you now because it doesn't necessarily tell you all of this information in the recipe, but I think it's worth knowing because I am amazed at the amount of people that make lumpy white sauces. And there doesn't need to be that uh, happen. It just doesn't need to happen because it's so easy. So here's the thing. A white sauce is basically fat of some variety uh, and in most cases it's butter and the reason people choose butter is because it actually adds a beautiful flavour to the sauce. Then you have some flour and then you have milk. Now you can make a sweet one or a, a savoury one by just adding a little bit of sugar to it or a bit of salt and pepper. But how you actually make it is the key. The traditional recipes will say to you melt the butter on the stove, then add the flour and in often cases they don't tell you to remove it from the stove which is wrong in itself uh, for a whole host of reasons but the first one being is that while the butter's there cooking away and you add the flour it's cooking straight away and literally you can't get the lumps out of it it's it's almost impossible so the key is to melt the butter to remove it from the heat or turn the heat off altogether add the flour and mix that to a paste now most recipes will tell you at this point, now put it back on the heat and cook the flour so you get rid of the starch. Now that, that's important. We do need to cook the starch, but not at that point. Because if you do that at that point, you will also get it going lumpy and it'll almost be impossible to mix the liquid with it. So my method is much, much simpler and guarantees you some results. So here's the way I do it. Melt the butter or you can use oil. Now I've used rice bran oil and I've used olive oil depending on what I'm going to use my sauce for. If I'm going to make something with it that's sweet and I'm going to add sugar to it I will use rice bran oil because it's fairly neutral in flavour. But if I'm going to make a savoury dish with it, so my, maybe it's a lasagna or something similar, a pasta bake of some sort or whatever else I choose, I will then add um, an olive oil and that will give it a lovely flavour. So you can use oil instead of butter if you choose. That's, that's quite okay to do and it works really well. And in fact nowadays I rarely use butter, I mostly use oil because the flour actually mixes into the oil 100% better, 100% better. So, so try that next time. So melt or your oil, add the flour, mix it to a beautiful paste, then add your liquid gradually. Now I usually use a whisk at this point rather than a wooden spoon because it actually mixes up much better. Little bit of flour at a time, mix it in, little bit of flour, mix it in until you've got all of that liquid completely incorporated. And it's quite runny at this point obviously, but it is completely mixed. Now take it to the heat and slowly bring it to the boil. So you're going to need your heat on high, but it'll gradually come to the boil and whisk on a continual basis. You will find that you will have the most perfect bechamel sauce for whatever it is that you're making, and it will be completely lump free. So give that a go next time you need a bechamel sauce for something in your recipe. I'm Victoria Hansen. Thanks for watching this week's blog. I look forward to seeing you again next time. Bye for now.